Today, I'm making French cleat tool holders, and I'm making five of them. A tool holder for my scroll saw, my brad nailer, my finish nailer, and a tool holder for multiple hand tools, and I'm doing it now. This is Dude Sawdust, and I'm Carpenter Logan. You're in for a treat. You've chosen to watch this video and learn how I built five French cleat tool holders. As you can see, I already started building a few, and to be honest with you, I was so excited about this wall that weeks and months ago I actually built these, just knowing I was going to do this. And now the time has finally come, and I'm going to fill this wall up with all my tools. I got so much stuff laying around and so many things that need to be organized. I am so excited about this, I can't even express myself. But stick around, watch how I go through these five tool holders. You're going to enjoy them, you're going to be impressed, you're going to want to build them yourself. So hopefully this gives you some inspiration for your home and your garage and your workshop. And if you don't have that, maybe it's just entertaining. So stick around and let's get to work. You know, I've been using these scraps from my lumber rack leftovers. Working out pretty nice. I highly recommend uh, keeping scraps. They do work out pretty cool. Things are going pretty well, but we've made a few mistakes. And when I say we, I mean me. I'm trying to make some shims to fill these gaps. Making shims that small is a little difficult. But I think I might be able to do it to salvage this, this project so it at least looks nice. This is going to work just fine as a tool holder. You're allowed to make mistakes for tool holders. They're just on the wall. But for you guys in dude Sawdustian land, I want this to look real nice. So let's see if I can salvage my mistakes or salvage my work by fixing my mistakes and make some little shims that'll fit in these spots. Now the little shim fell through the slot right here. So let's see if it's still intact down there. I think it did because I think the blade stopped by the time it got down there. And there it is. So it looks like this shim is just a hair too wide to fit there. But I got a little trick up my sleeve, and I think it's gonna work. I think I done did it. Now this little shim is too wide to fit in that slot. So I'm gonna cut down that line. Now using a table saw is gonna be very difficult, but I have another trick. Razor blade and hammer. I 
really feel like this is a teaching moment. When doing carpentry, you're gonna make mistakes. And as you can see here, I, these dados just didn't work out very well for me. But instead of trashing the project and start all over, I wanted to show you guys that I was capable of fixing my mistakes. We are gonna make mistakes, but can you fix those mistakes? I put these little shims here. Three shims is all it took. A little bit of wood glue, sanding down this to make it nice and flush. Uh, I have to say, I'm kind of impressed with myself. Well, everybody, the brad nail tool holder turned out pretty nice. We had some bumps along the way, but I'm really proud of the way it came out. One thing you'll notice about my tool holders is I like to incorporate the accessories that are going to go with that tool project. So I went ahead and made a spot for the brad nails. I'm trying to keep everything together. And while I was at it, I went ahead and did my finish nailer as well. So same concept. I didn't want to bore you guys with watching the build on set both of them, but they're very similar. One difference is I put a little 13 degree angle right here for this to kind of slope and give a little support to this portion of it. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same setup. These different pieces give support so it's well balanced and not putting too much pressure on any one point. Um, when making these types of holders, always think about the stuff that goes with it. That's what takes it to the next level. That's what makes it a Cleat System 2.0 in, in one way or another. One thing that I want to point out to you, now the finish nailer tool holder, I was able to focus more and really get those dados just perfect. The other one I used glue. This one, I didn't use any glue at all. These fit in so perfectly and so nice that I was quite pleased with the way it came out. These are the lessons we learn as we do the woodworking, as we do our projects. It's okay to make mistakes, but the fun part is, is trying to fix them and trying to learn how to fix them. You've seen me build one. I gave you two, but I built one, and I got another one I'm gonna build for this. This is my Harbor Freight scroll saw, a 16 inch variable speed scroll saw. A very inexpensive purchase. I used it for a project that it went phenomenal for. I really like this thing. I've never used a high end one, so I don't know the difference in the feel of a high end one versus just a Harbor Freight one, but I'll say if you're interested, it did the trick. It did a great job. I love it. I'm gonna build a tool holder for this 23 pound machine. It's gonna go on this French cleat wall. I have no doubts that this wall can hold a 23 pound piece of machinery. leftover scraps that I've been using from my clamp rack build and I find out they fit almost just perfectly as brace supports for this little doodad. Just got to trim off a little bit here and uh, I think it's going to work out pretty nice. Didn't even have to cut the triangles. Got these nice curvy pieces. pieces to fine tune it and then we're going to talk a little bit about it. I'm done with the second tool holder build for our French cleat wall. I made an audible on this one. My original idea had a plan that once I started building it, I felt it wasn't gonna be the best idea. So this is what I originally had planned. I made this a little extra long for the scroll saw. 
giving this extra space in which I would build a top side cubby and I could store accessories in there. I have over here a little baggie full of extra blades and Allen wrenches, little tools for adjustments for the saw. So I thought that would be a great place to kind of store it. But then when I realized it was gonna end up being too small for my hand to even fit all the way in and it would be this awkward looking box. When I realized down here, I had a great opportunity to put storage down here, a lot extra space. I can put that, those adjustment pieces and the extra blades, as well as anything else I want to put in there. Another thing that I did was I put these little border pieces here. This is going to be stored up high, probably at the highest point. The items that I'm not going to be using on a routine basis, I'm going to be storing up high like the scroll saw. In California or wherever you are, you never know what's going to happen with uh, movement of the earth. And for heaven forbid, I, we get some earthquake. Because this is going to be carrying a 23 pound piece of tool, I want it to be super strong. So I support it with glue, but instead of going with brad nails, I decided to go with finish nails. 18 gauge versus 16 gauge. This thing is pretty darn solid. Not too shabby looking, huh? I got three more holders to build, so keep on watching. Here we go. Look at this mess. This is a bunch of tools that I've been collecting over the years, and they've all ended up in one or two drawers piled on top of each other. But now, this is the day I've been looking forward to for a long time. I'm gonna build something cubbies I'm thinking, some smaller, some bigger, some deeper, some wide. I, I don't know yet. I haven't figured it all out, but we're going to piece it together and you're going to come along for the ride. Ran into a little bit of a challenge, but I think we can overcome it. This is a dry up right now, there's no glue, I just have the clamps here in place, testing it out. This piece is bowed. It bows like this, so it sits high here. Now underneath, I drew underneath, I drew a line all the way across so I can see how it's not flush. I also drew a line back here to tell me where that board is supposed to be, so this line and this line match each other. So here's what I think I'm gonna do to make this flush. I'm gonna take these clamps off. I'm going to apply glue here and attach this piece to this piece because this is the top and this is the bottom. Once I have this glued and reapply these clamps in this exact position, I'm going to press right here. And if I apply about that much pressure, it makes it flush, in which I'll take the finish nailer to this side, 16 gauge. This is going to be possibly heavy, so we're going to give it some extra support with the 16 gauge. I want 16 gauge in the middle to secure that spot right about, yeah, that's about the right amount of pressure. And that way, it'll be flush and flat. It'll be a little bit of a challenge, but I think we can handle it. So stay with me, dude sawdustians. Things are going to get a little wild. sides of the tool holder. I drew this curved line. I'm going to get my jigsaw and I'm going to cut that out and I'm going to trace this onto another piece. That's what way we'll have two matching sides. I drew these lines here which represents the dividers. It's five millimeter uh, birch thin plywood that we're going to make up the grid squares with for the little cubbies that are going to stand upright. Um, kept looking at it and looking at it and looking at it and redid it and redid it. 
I finally got a nice curve flow that I think is going to be okay. I think it's going to work. We'll just have to see how it goes. We're going to cut this one out. Jonas, we've gotten this far. Now we need to construct the cubbies. And this is probably gonna be the most difficult part, but the most rewarding. Now I know you're an expert builder, you've told me. You've had lots of experience building things. Can you tell some of our viewers at Dude Saw Dusty and Land some of the things in your portfolio? I've built a house, another house, a McDonald's, a movie theater, and a skyscraper. Wow, that's, that's quite an impressive list of things. Now, where can our viewers go to see these things? Minecraft. Okay, so what have you built that's real? Dad, Minecraft is real. Okay, fair enough, Minecraft is real. Well, since you're an expert builder and you've done quite a few different projects, what would you recommend we do? Should we use uh, small pieces to make the square cubbies or maybe an interlocking system? What do you recommend? I recommend an interlocking system. An interlocking system, dado joints? Yes. All right, dado joints it is. There probably have to be some big dado joints in, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, then let's do it. And now for the moment of truth. I'm quite impressed if I do say so myself. I was a little nervous there, but it worked. Okay, Jonas, we're pretty much done here. I took your advice with the interlocking system here with the panels. Uh, pretty proud of the way it went. What do you think? I really like how spaced out the squares are and how this is curved on the side panels. Well, I thank you. I'm glad you pointed that out. That was one of my favorite features, the custom design on the side. I think it gives a little flavor that everyone's looking for. I also went ahead and put shelves in at the bottom just like I did with the scroll saw tool holder. And I threw a cleat on the back so it's pretty much ready to go up on the wall. Uh, all we got to do is throw the tools in. What do you think? So good. concludes part one of our variety tool holder build. We got one, two, and three holders finished. We have two more to do, and maybe there'll be a little surprise at the end. Join us for part two, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. It really helps Dude Sawed Us get out there to the masses and grow as a channel. We love your support, and looking forward to see you on part two. Should we do an interlocking system? What do you recommend? I re recommend a 
locking system. Okay, we're gonna start over. Okay. <laughs> Say interlocking. 